Hey everyone, I hope you're having a great day today. I wanted to make a quick video to go over normalization and talk a little bit about what normalization is. So first of all, normalization is a way of getting a well-formed data model. It's not the only way and it's not even necessarily the best way. Um, you know, some people prefer to start with an ERD and build a well-formed model that way. Some people prefer to do normalization. I think chances are good you're not going to prefer normalization. There's a lot of rules and stuff to remember, but that could be helpful for you. Uh, so ultimately, what the end result of this should lead to is a very similar thing to what an ERD that's well-formed should lead to. Uh, so with that in mind, one term I want to make sure that you know is functional dependency. What functional dependency is saying is if we have an attribute inside of an entity, what's determining that attribute? Uh, we ideally want that to be the primary key that determines each of our attributes. In some cases, we may have an attribute inside of an entity that's determined by another attribute inside of that entity that's not the primary key. Uh, we'll show examples of that when we get into second and third normal forms. But for now, that's something that I want you to keep in the back of your head. Whenever you have a non-key attribute determining another attribute inside of the entity, we refer to that as transitive dependency. Uh, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and talk about these normal forms. So essentially, we have four normal forms that we're going to cover in this class. Starting at zero normal form, we refer to that as something that's not normalized, something that is not well formed. And really, the key distinguisher that makes something in zero normal form are one of these two things. The first is when you have a multi-valued attribute. Something like a name, where it's comprised of multiple parts, first name, middle name, last name. Address, where it's comprised of multiple parts, something like you know, street address one, street address two, city, state, zip. All of those are things that are going to be included within something that has an attribute that's not a single value. The other key thing that can cause something to be in zero normal form is if you have two entities that have a many-to-many -many relationship. And instead of addressing that with an associative entity where you take the primary keys and put them into that associative entity as a composite primary key and as foreign keys, if you address that by having, say, value 1, value 2, value 3, and so forth, that would also be something that's not well formed, and that would be something that would cause that entity to be in the zero normal form. So that's the, uh, the normal form we're going to talk about. Assuming that we're inside of normal forms, though, we have first normal form. And unlike zero normal form, these essentially are saying that we can only have single-valued attributes. So if we had something like address, like name, those are not single-valued attributes. Those have multiple values inside of each attribute. Okay, so that is going to be one of the ways to go from 0 to 1. And the other way to go from 0 to 1 is all of the rows have the same number of columns. What that means is that we don't have manager one, manager two, manager three. We instead essentially have where every single thing is going to have an observation for it. Okay, there's not a lot of null values because not every employee has three managers, but some do. That's fully accounted for. That's not present in first normal form. Moving to second normal form, essentially what this is saying is we have some sort of a non-key column that's part of the primary key. So if we take a look at our example here, we have an order entity where the primary key is actually a composite key comprised of item number and customer ID. So those two things together collectively form the primary key, which is what we refer to as a composite key. Now, quantity is determined by those combinations, but in this case, customer credit is not determined by the primary key. It has nothing to do with the item number. It only has to do with customer ID. So what that's going to lead to 
is that's going to lead to a lot of repeated customer credit because for every single order that a customer makes, they're going to have that repeated. Okay, so that's essentially what we're trying to do with these normal forms is we're trying to reduce redundancy and we're trying to build the best possible model. So because customer credit does not relate directly to the entire primary key, it's a violation of second normal form. Okay, so that's certainly something to keep in mind there. Now, a little bit different is third normal form. And this is where we get into talking about transitive dependencies. Okay, so notice that here, a non-key element was essentially a fact about part of the primary key. Okay, that means we could split this up further. With third normal form, what we're saying is that there is a, an attribute inside of an entity that is not, that is actually determining another attribute inside of that entity. So if we take a look at this stock entity here, we have the primary key is the stock code. We have nation and we have exchange rate. So essentially the exchange rate is determined by stock code because the stock code, we know it's particular to one nation. The issue is, is that exchange rate is also determined by nation. So that's a violation of third normal form. What we would do to address this is we would split off this entity. So instead of having a stock entity that includes exchange rate, we might have a stock entity that has stock code and nation. And then instead of having exchange rate inside of it, we might have a nation entity that has nation as the primary key and exchange rate as an attribute. That would fully address the violation of third normal form here. So with that information out of the way, uh, I encourage you very strongly to look through a lot of examples of these normal forms. Okay, it's a little bit tricky to go from second to third. Now, a couple of pointers and tips that I'm gonna give you. First of all, you're not always gonna make a change to an entity in going from first to second to third normal form. Because if you look at these requirements in a little bit more detail, for something to be in second normal form, it must meet the requirements of first normal form, okay? But it also must meet the requirements of second normal form. So you could very well have two entities that have no changes going from first to second normal form. Same thing going from second to third normal form. You may have an entity that has no changes at all when you're going from second to third normal form, and that may be completely normal. So I've got some full lectures posted on this topic if you want a little bit more detail. Um, the other thing I will tell you is when you're going from first to second or second to third, if you have to make a change, the answer is almost always going to be to split up the entity into one or more new entities. Okay, in the case of the stock entity, like I mentioned, you would split the stock entity into a stock entity and a nation entity, and that would take you to third normal form. In the case of second normal form, you wouldn't include customer credit in the order. Instead, you would split that off into a second entity. So that's essentially how you're going to go between the normal forms is you're going to take one entity that you currently have, split it into two or more new entities. So I certainly hope that was helpful. Like I said, I do encourage you to look at more examples. My goal with these videos is of course to provide short descriptions that get right to the point. I hope you have a great rest of the day and I hope you enjoy the nice weather.